If you're just starting out in photography, or even if you're a professional and you wanna work smarter and faster within your photography, and who doesn't, then you just try this new program that I'm gonna show you called Luminar Neo, so let's get into it. Hey folks, welcome back to the channel. For those of you that don't know me, my name is Tommy Reynolds. I'm a portrait and wedding photographer based in South East England. And as I said today, we're gonna to be looking at a brand new program called Luminar Neo and showing you how I use it as a wedding photographer. Well, what is Luminar? Well, Luminar is a photo editing program powered and driven entirely by AI. It's simple enough to use, yet powerful enough for any professional to get the most out of it and to work so much faster than it would be working in Photoshop, for example. So what are the major differences then between Luminar and Photoshop? Well, as I said, Luminar is driven entirely by artificial intelligence to allow you to create so many different things. And some of the tools that it has, for example, includes instant sky replacements, masking out the backgrounds, erasing unwanted objects in the background. You can remove telephone lines and even dust spots on the images, all with just a single click which is mad. As well as that, it also has some really advanced portrait tools, which is really handy for me as a portrait and wedding photographer. So if there's a special edit that I wanna do, I'll bring it into Luminar from Photoshop or Lightroom. And that's another good thing about it. The plugin can be installed directly into Lightroom and Photoshop as well. So you don't have to come away from the program or export it from the program, bring it into Luminar. You can edit it straight from your native editing program. So let's dive in, let's see how it works. I wanna show you a couple of examples of some of my images and see how I would edit them. Okay, so here we are in Luminar Neo and if I wanted to start editing an image, all I'd do is just double click it and hover over to either the preset or the edit. Now we'll get into these in a little bit later on, but just to show you what it briefly looks like, if I go to the edit, we can see the very, very nice user interface Luminar has, making it really easy to select different tools and make different adjustments. Now, before I start editing, I wanna show you how I edit directly from Lightroom. That's my workflow. As a wedding photographer, I'm editing or making an initial edit in Lightroom. And then if there's a particular edit that I wanna pay more close attention to, or it's gonna be part of a preview image, then maybe that's when I'll bring it into Luminar and use some of the extra tools that it has. So let's do that. So as a wedding I did earlier this year, you can see I've already made an initial adjustment here um, on the right. Now, if I wanna bring this into Luminar, all I would just simply do is go to photo, edit in, Luminar Neo edit a copy with Lightroom adjustments. You can see that there were several different versions of Luminar. There was Luminar 4 and AI and Neo. Neo is the latest one. First time I used Luminar was Luminar 4 and the first thing I wanted to do was jump straight to the sky replacement tool because I wanted to see how that worked and I was blown away when I first used Luminar 4. Now we're using Luminar Neo with even extra features, but I wanna show you that sky replacement tool when I first used it. So here we are in Luminar Neo. Uh, on the right here, we've got some go-to presets. So depending on the scene, you can select a preset to get you pretty close to what you wanna do. But I'm gonna just slow it down and break it, break some of the features down one by one. So if we go to edit up here in the center. Now again, here is the user interface. Now the first thing I wanna do is replace the sky. As we can see in the image, it was at sunset. Um, the sky is okay, a um, little bit blown out in some places, um, but let's see if we can make it look a little bit more dramatic. So if I go to sky here, sky AI, and here is your sky selection. Here's where you can select all the different skies which are available. You've got a panel with, that shows you all the skies, or you can break it down to specific dramatic sky or dramatic sunset. Um, I definitely know this was obviously at sunset, so let's try and pick a sky that closely resembles what was actually there on the day. So let's try dramatic sunset and let's pick one at random. Let's go dramatic sunset one. I click it and with one click, it's gonna think about it and paste the sky straight onto the image there. Already done. One click and it's done all the masking for me. If I zoom in, so that we can see it masks around the hair in particular. That's always hard, isn't it? So if I zoom in here, you can see the tiny little details and the hair, the little flecks of hair, it's even masked around that and it's done such a superb job with only one click. Let's try and look at another sunset. Let's try, let's try this one. Okay, yeah, that one also looks really nice as well. Let's stick with that one and let's uh, try and build on that and see what else we can do. So what I wanna do now is I can see that the, uh, the background is slightly out of focus there given the aperture that I was using and we notice that the sky is quite sharp so it doesn't quite feel right. So the first thing I wanna do real quick is change the defocus in the sky adjustment. So let's increase that to around 20. 
and now that looks a little bit closer to what it would look like if the sky was really there. As well as doing that, I can obviously change the warmth and the brightness. So I'm gonna leave the brightness where it is. Um, I can flip it. I actually think that looks quite nicer because I think that I believe that's where the sun was roughly setting anyway. Other than flipping, I can change the horizon so I can uh, make, it, make it bigger or smaller. I can even change how far left or right it was. So you could position it right in the middle if you wanted to. That looks quite, that looks quite nice there actually. I'll leave it there, looks quite good. So if I'm happy with that, if I simply hit the apply button, but before I do that, I'm just very quickly going to go into the develop module, which is kind of your basic exposure, smart contrast, and I'm just going to change the color of the overall image. So I'm going to bring the tint, I think more red. Yeah, that looks much nicer already. And maybe make it a bit warmer. Okay, yeah, that looks really nice. So if you want to preview and see what it looks like before and after, you just simply come down here to the eyedropper tool and we can see before, after. You can see it's a dramatic difference already. Now to bring it back into Lightroom, I just simply hit apply up here. It's gonna export it. And now I'm back in Lightroom and you can see it's made a second version of that image. So I won't lose the original image. The original image is still here with those adjustments I made before it went into Luminar. And it's just made a copy here with all my adjustments that I've made, um, including changing the color, etc. as well. So now I can just go to export as I would normally with the rest of the images. I can easily stay within Lightroom, jump over to Neo and it comes back into Lightroom, making the process so much easier. So let's have a look at another example. So this was an image I took earlier this year in Italy. Again, I've made my initial adjustments and saved it as a JPEG. So this is now a JPEG we're working with. I've brought this into Luminar Neo. And if I now go to the edits, um, so I'm not gonna do a sky replacement for this one. Uh, instead, I wanna show you uh, Relights AI, which is a new feature specifically for Luminar Neo. What Relight AI does is it, it cleverly reads the image almost in 3D, even though obviously it's a 2D image but it reads it in 3D so it knows where the foreground is and where the background is. It knows where the people are on the image. So if I wanted to, I can make adjustments to the brightness of the foreground to be different from the brightness of the background. So let me show you what I mean. So if I change the brightness there, what's closer to us, if I increase that, we can see that that increases the brightness of what's towards us. And then if I then decrease the brightness behind it knows to change the brightness from behind the depth that chooses where it starts and where it ends you can see uh, you can see on the floor there where it starts and end now actually luminar got it spot on straight away so i'm going to leave that um, in the middle where it is and let's readjust so that was a bit too much so let's go only a little bit higher and bring that down just a little bit more I'm going to make a tweak on the color, the same kind of the same as I did before, because I am noticing again, it's got a green tinge to it. So I'm just going to go down to the develop, go down to tint and make it more red because it's looking a bit green there. OK, yeah, that's looking nice already. Um, and I'm going to bring down the saturation. OK, cool. That's looking nice. Let's have a look at the before and after. So again, we just use the eye dropper tool down here already that's looking much much better if you wanted to go back on one of the tools that you've already played with all you would need to do is go up here to edits and here are the two adjustments which i've already made so you don't have to kind of undo undo if you want to change relight again you just go into the edits go to relight and here i can make those adjustments again without affecting the color previously once i come back out of the tools Another great one is the enhance tool. If I increase the accent, you can see it just kind of brings up the, the shadows on all of the details here, just kind of giving everything more of a punch. I've got the sky enhancer here, so that's great if you've already got a particularly nice sky like we do have here. We don't need to do a sky replacement, but let's see if we can enhance what's already there. I can move that slider and we can see that just makes it look a little bit more contrasty, adds a bit more color. I think it actually looks good if I just wipe that up all the way up to 100%. That looks really nice. If you want to see a before and after on the specific tool you're on, so you just hit the eye dropper tool up here instead. Already, that's made a massively big difference. And then down here is when you can see a before and after on everything. Huge, huge difference already. So if we go down to structure. This is also another nice tool. If I increase it, that's just going to increase 
those details, increase the sharpness, increase the clarity. So I think it's more of a mid-tone thing. It kind of resembles the clarity slider, to, to my eye anyway, um, in Lightroom. So adjusting that just gives brings out all those details into those mid-tones specifically. You can then boost that if you want by increasing it. Uh, I'm gonna just bring that back to zero and be really subtle with this because I don't want it to look too kind of nitty gritty. Uh, and finally, what I want to do to this image and a great feature again in Luminar is the erase tool. So I can see that there are some cars here. There's also a guy here taking, a, looks like he's taking a picture of the sunset. I don't blame him. But let's see if we can try it and erase the cars and this guy here. So we just simply select him, make sure he's highlighted all red. And I'm going to go over here to get rid of the cars as well. Cool. And then just come over here and then hit erase. There we go. It's a raise. It's just easily done that. It's content aware. It knows what's behind it. So it knows to match what's behind it to give you a nice seamless background. It's also here that in the erase tool, you can remove power lines and dust spots. I don't have any dust spots here um, and there's no obvious power lines in the composition. So I'm happy with this. Let's go on to the next one. OK, let's have a look at this one. This is an image taken on a uh, on a day trip out with my wife and my son, George. Uh, my wife took this image on a camera we were hiring. We hired the Fuji X100 V, as you can see up there. Now, I know I want to make this image black and white, but I don't want to fiddle with too many of the sliders. I want to get this image done quickly. So for that, we just simply go to the preset in the center, top center. If you look on the right here, you can scroll down and see examples of some of some different scenarios where you might want to consider some of the presets that are inside these folders here. So it's not a sunset, it's not a waterscape. I, I know I want it to be black and white, so let's go monochrome. Within monochrome, we've got a series of different filters we can try. Let's try soulful, let's try clicking that one, and that's now going to apply all of the different tools to make that preset. Okay, lovely, that's pretty good, that's pretty close. But now if we go into the edit module and we go to edits, we can see all of the different effects that have been used to make this preset. But let's see if we can tweak and adjust them. So the first thing I wanna do is go to the develop module and I wanna increase the exposure because it was a little bit dark when my wife took the image. That's it, okay, that's looking better. Now what I wanna do is I wanna bring out the detail in George's eyes, I wanna make them pop. So if I go back to edits, because I know that this preset has already applied some effects in the face tab but we're just going to tweak them tweak what's already there you can see within the face you've got a couple of options you can face light you can increase the brightness on just the face again this is great luminar knows where the face is and you don't need to worry about masking around it it's going to do it all for you you can even slim the face as well so i'm not going to worry about that one i'm going to leave that as is but it's also got two extra modules. But now you can play with the eyes and the mouth as well, which is really, really great. We really want to bring out the eyes. So it's already included the eye enhancer, but let's see if we whack it all the way up just so you can see what's happening. So you can see the highlights, the mid-tones, the contrast has really been increased to really show off uh, George's eyes. So if we bring that down, so it's not quite as high. The eye whitening tool, so we can lift that up. So that's just gonna lift the whites in the eyes just there, just to make them pop. That's gonna be helpful, especially knowing that this is gonna be a black and white image. Uh, we've got improved eyebrows. <laughs> so we're gonna increase that. So that's always, always helpful on um, brides on wedding days, just to add more contrast to the face. And it's gonna be helpful actually in this image as well, because I know that it's gonna be a black and white image. So it's all about just uh, adding contrast to the face to help the highlights stand out even more. We can enlarge the eyes <laughs> to make George look even more cute. Um, but let's leave it back down to, to zero, but the option is there. As well as tweaking the eyes and the brightness of his face, we can also adjust uh, skin. This is where you can remove skin blemishes or imperfections, that sort of thing. You can remove the shine in someone's face. If I zoom in just so you can see what's happening. If I increase it all the way to 100, just so you can see what's happening, that's obviously way too much and it's uh, too soft. So if I bring that down to zero and let's bring it up to about, to about 20 or 30, about there. If I increase the shine removal, you can see just around the T-zone here, it's just ever so slight change there. So this would be useful for someone who's maybe got uh, a bit of a sweaty forehead or sweaty face. This will help remove that. So that's really good. 
skin defects removal AI. So this is good if there maybe are any spots on the face. Um, if I tick that, watch this little spot go, that automatically goes with just a tick. Didn't even need to highlight it. Didn't even need to select where to get rid of it. It just detected it on the face and got rid of it. So that's pretty cool. AI is just crazy. Okay, I'm happy with this image. Again, let's look at the before and after. That was the before, that was the after. Before, after, so much better now. Let's have a look at one more example using the portrait tool. So again, I'm in Lightroom. I'm in the middle of the edit here, but I'm gonna go edit in Luminar Neo. So if we now go to the edit tool and I'm gonna scroll down to face AI, and here we can increase the brightness on Yulia's face a touch. Uh, I'm not going to slim the face, I'm going to leave that as is. Uh, now the eyes, this is something that I really want to explore. So let's try and bring out the eyes. So the eye enhancer, let's bring out the, let's try and lift the eyes. So there we go, let's make them a little bit broad. And let's try increasing the eye whitening as well. Again, I don't want to go too crazy with this. I think whitening the eyes on people's faces um, is a really easy giveaway that some manipulation has happened. So I'm going to be very careful not to overdo the eye whitening in particular. Uh, improve eyebrows. I mean, Yulia's already got pretty good eyebrows anyway, but I'm, so I'm only going to increase that a touch. Dark circle removal. We can see just underneath the eyes, it makes it a little bit softer. Lifts the shadows just a touch. Now with the uh, iris visibility, you've got the original, but you can actually change the color of their eyes. So yeah, I think she's got green eyes, greeny blue eyes. So if we go to green, we can see that it really changes the color of the eyes here. Let's zoom in a little bit. So that's what it was. And then if I can change it to blue, or I can change it to gray, or I can change it to hazel or cat or honey or owl. That's interesting then you would then move this slider to increase the visibility of that as well. Uh, it's a bit too much for me. I'm going to stick with the original, um, but I'm going to give it an iris flare. So that just then just lifts it a little, little sum. That looks nice. Uh, down to the mouth option, increase the lip saturation, lips redness. She's already wearing a red lipstick. So this is going to uh, make it really red. Lip darkening, just make it a little bit darker. Teeth whitening, if teeth were being shown. And then down to skin AI, so let's increase the slight smoothing of the skin. And then to see a before and after. Okay, yeah, that looks really nice. Then if I, if I do a before and after of everything, there we go. That's gonna be probably one of the preview images. Well, I hope that was helpful, guys. As you can see, Luminar is a very versatile software, not just for beginners, but also for professionals like myself who want to get an edit done very, very quickly. We don't have to worry about masking. We don't have to worry about erasing things out of the background. Having the ability to do this so quickly makes my time way more efficient. The less time I'm spent sat here and more time out shooting is way better for me. So Luminar helps me in that respect. So if you do want to try Luminar Neo, then just click the link in the description box below for all the details, as well as a free trial that you can activate and have a play with just to get an idea of what it's all about. I would highly recommend it. Even if you're a beginner or a professional, you can definitely use this in your workflow. And I certainly do as a wedding photographer. Well, that's about it for this video, guys. If you liked it, please make sure you hit the like or share button or subscribe if you're watching this on YouTube. And as always, I will see you again next time. Cheers, guys. Bye bye.